the Wise of DICOM and digital image transfer in the O12. And the reason I started with fireworks is, as you all know, stuff's changing quickly, and this year is going to change. It's going to be really changing a lot because bandwidth in storage space is becoming cheap. Bandwidth is becoming plentiful. Everything is going to be going digital, and it's. I actually talk about it later. I think it's the era, uh, the beginning of the era of the general practitioner, because you're going to have. So many. You already see it. You have uh, specialists coming to your hospital to actually do consults. It's just going to get more. It's going to get more because you're going to have all these people vying for your business who can do anything over the web. Almost any web. Certain things can't be done. Emergency critical care can't be done over the web. But a lot of the stuff, you think about teleradiology is tip of the iceberg. So there's going to be a lot of changes, and that's why – practice management software, and all this stuff is going to be very important. So we're going to talk about it. But the why is really important to you. And you've got to decide, okay, what's important to me and how will it relate to what I do? So first thing is we got to look at, okay, how does it pertain to you? And then where are we headed? And I'm going to sprinkle this with DICOM education because I don't want to inundate you with all the technical jargon. But you should understand DICOM so you know how to utilize it for your practice. All right? So first, you've got to think about why you're a vet. And whatever you come up with, whatever the reason is, I can tell you that the future is going to, it's going to affect it. It's going to make it better. It may be that you love being a vet because you love of animals and you want to be able to save as many animals and lives and you're committed to that. It may be that you like the challenge of the medicine, which is very different. Both of those, though, are going to play into the future because you're going to be able to get access to all this information. Just like your owners do with Dr. Google, you're going to have actually specialists that are going to be able to consult with you and do it face-to-face -face or over Skype kind of thing and help you out with all this information. And it might just be your pursuit of knowledge, but this is where everything is going to go is teleconsulting. I want to get you prepared for that because as Dr. G was talking, talking about, if you don't know what you need, for the future, then you're going to end up buying something or getting into something and go, My limit, I'm limited in my capabilities. So you should look at it and go, okay, I'm going to, we're going to be going here, so therefore I need to make sure the systems can do all of this stuff. So where are we now? Everyone knows teleradiology. You submit your images, DICOM, email doesn't cut it because I'm going to show you a picture in a minute because email is made to actually compress down your information. You only have a finite amount of uh, inbox size and a single DICOM image will fill up pretty much your whole inbox. So they compress it down to where it can actually get in there. It's about 1% of what the uh, original size is. And that would be fine if there wasn't loss of information. But there's loss of information. I'll show you in the next one. So what's going to happen is you start sending off emails and you're using the teleconsulting service because you're looking as a revenue stream or you want to help out and you think you're doing a good job, and then someone misses a lesion, you're like, I'm never using that again. And then you have it's kind of a food aversion and, you know, vomiting animal. It's not the actual modality. It's not the food. It's that there's something else wrong, and that's the compression. So you got to understand that you don't want this stuff compressed down. All right? So you submit your images in. You may submit your history some other way. Uh, or may fax it in, and you may actually put it when it gets online. They link together. You receive your report via email or fax, or it sits online. And then the other services, let's say you call Antec or IDEX, all right, and you want to get an IM consult done, or you will end up sending it to the surgeon for review, and they look at the image and they talk to you on the phone. That's how everything's done now, and you may end up finding yourself on the phone for a while, or you got to find this piece of paper and get them that piece of paper. It's inefficient, and it's going to go to a very efficient place. So email, inbox size is limited. If you sent a full size, all right, you would get bounced, so they have to turn it into poop, pretty much. And they term this in the in the industry lossy. Lossy means there's loss of information or compression. About 20% compression is maximum for a DICOM image. Anything above that, you're losing information that's for medical diagnosis. You could compress a DICOM image way down, but you're going to lose stuff. So what you really want is you want uncompressed or lossless when you're sending them out, when you're looking at them, when you're getting them. You don't want any of that stuff. Okay? DICOM 
is that medical quality where it actually is not a very compressible image. You can, you can do some tricks to it to compress it down, but overall, they keep their format for a reason, that size. They don't want to lose information. So just keep in mind, uncompressed or lossless. All right? And the DICOM really is. It's a JPEG image just with a wrapper that you can't change. So it's just, you, you can compress the heck out of a JPEG. You can't really lose a lot of that information. All right. So here is the difference. Email on the left, DICOM on the right. See what happens to the bone. It starts to get very indistinct. The reason is that when you're compressing, let's say you take 100 pixels, and then what you do is you blend all of them together into one to, so you don't have to move all the information in each one of those pixels. You just move one, the information of one, and then you spread it across there. So then you start losing trabecular bone or inability to see early images, uh, early lesions in there. And so for a lot of the studies, fine. But for subtle lesions, they're going to get missed. And then you're going to be like, well, that's not really working out well for me. It's because a lot of times that vendors come in and they say, oh, you just email the images off. It's not acceptable. So you really want to make sure that you are able to move a DICOM, send it, or burn a CD. This is a big key point as to when you start blowing up. Okay? DICOM, acronym, Digital Imaging Communications in Medicine. So if, any, if you just want it, always wondered, it's been a burning question for you. Keeps you up at night. Yeah. Yes, it does. A lot of things keep you up at night. Yeah. So think of it like a JPEG or a TIFF or a bitmap. And when they talk about a DICOM viewer, it's just like Photoshop. In fact, Photoshop can open up different types of images. A DICOM viewer is made to view DICOM images. That's all it is. It's not magic. It's just that you need to have a DICOM viewer to view a DICOM image. And so Sean actually said this is, digital image transfer is nothing without maintaining image integrity. Keep that in mind when you do, so there's no loss of information, you're golden. You want to keep the image integrity, and that's for everything going forward. It's for videos, it's for still images, it's for pictures, whatever you're taking of patients, any of that stuff. So we're heading... Where we're headed is exciting. Now, this is years ago. You know, people, you've seen this before, looking over the television, talking to the old age microphones. It's going gonna, it's gonna to change to where you got a little camera on top of your computer, and you're going to be Skyping and looking and talking and showing someone the lesion, and it's not that far off. You may look and go, oh, yeah, that's not going to happen. That's, it's really not far off at all because bandwidth now is so plentiful. For instance, at home, I don't know how many of you know what your bandwidth up and down is for your speeds. Do you have a cable modem? <coughs> yeah, cheap. If you spend like 50, 60 bucks, I, I'm not going to say it's Cox or Time Warner. I don't know. But I was talking to them just the other day about some stuff. Yeah, see, it used to be 156 ki kilobits, right? And a T1 line was like one meg, and that was $1,000. Well, now you spend 60 bucks, and you're getting 10 meg down and 2 meg up. You're getting 30, 40 times what you used to get. So now the data can be moved so fast, and that's for 50 or 60 bucks. You don't have to, and that's, that's 10 to the T1 line. Right? And that's pretty standard now is to get 10 meg down. On mobile, when we're using um, the data, the cellular networks to move images across, we're, they're, we're getting 40 meg down because it's bonded and 5 or 6 meg up. A single data card, a 4G card, it's five meg down. So you can get half of what you're getting at home. You can, so it's amazing how plentiful it is. I heard someone say something. <clears throat> Do you agree? I mean, the, the movement of data? Yeah. Yeah. And so a lot of people think, because they've heard, oh, T1 line, T1 this, T1 that. That's old school. T1 was when you couldn't get a lot of data. Now you can get a lot of data. And the only thing is, Business versus, um, you know, uh, residential. Residential is easy to get a lot of bandwidth. Business, they try and limit it and make you pay more. But pretty amazing. So now imagine if you can then have loads of bandwidth for your hospital and you can then start just video conferencing with people and talking to them and them showing you 
uh, you showing them areas of interest and them com commenting. Now you can move all this data. As long as you don't lose any of the information, someone can help you out from around the world with a case. Right? Critical care is probably the only area. So you're in a great spot. Because right? Because these animals are overnight, they need help, and they're going to have to really be monitored. Karen's in a great spot. I think you know they're in a great spot. Emergency, I really think emergency critical care is in the best possible spot besides general practitioners. Because you all are going to be, you're going to be leading where the cases are going and everyone's going to be vying for your business to talk to you about stuff. Plus the demographic of veterinary medicine, a lot of people actually are staying home more. A lot of the specialists are staying home. And so it started with teleradiology. It's going to move on to everything. So telediagnostics, stream now, Skype, digital microscopy. You're going to be able to put stuff on the slide. That I think is a little bit longer, but I can, I'm going to show you. You're like, oh, this is years away. It's not. I'm going to show you how much data you can now move to the cloud and have people consulting. All right, so changed the way we do stuff, and for the most part, it's changed it for the worse. We, our business model was really selling drugs, selling pet, pet stuff, all of that, but our business is really information, and that's where the Internet actually is going to make it amazing for us because it capitalizing on that business of information, the services being done at your facility, and diagnostics, and you're going to be able to actually be offering loads of diagnostics because of using the Internet. So though I, I really see it, and this is a little bit is my thought on it, this model is going away because the Internet's made everything cheap and ubiquitous and people can buy what you can sell them, but it's going to replace with this. That's how I see it. How many of you right now are using teleradiology? Yes, no. Karen is. And I don't know what it ends up being in terms of your revenue, but and your lab services and all of that stuff, and you start being able to offer different consults while you're in there seeing an exam, and you have a case that's kind of something's going on, you know, and you've got three series of blood work, and you're like, I'm not sure what to do next, and you just go and send that off to someone, they look over all the blood work and everything and type up a report and you're in there doing an exam on your next patient, you come back out and it tells you exactly what to do because of the blood work changes and all that and they get on the phone. You're going to be able to manage a lot of stuff as much as you want to manage. So um, can telediagnostics bring the noise? And what I mean by that is can they be accurate? And keep this really as your guiding principle. If the data... It can be replicated without a loss of information. Yeah. Right? What can't be replicated without a loss of information? Your physical exam. Your, the way you're evaluating a patient, you know, that can't be replicated. But a lot of the other stuff, especially if it's coming from a lab, you know, you've got, you got your blood work there. Um, you've, got, you've got to decide what to do. Things are changing, how everything's being addressed. Anyone can look at that and kind of give you some impressions on that and talk to you about it and have it communication. So I think physical exam is actually going to be probably the most important. It's kind of weird, huh? Physical exam used to be the main thing. That it's like all these other diagnostics, and I think it's going to get to be really important again. It always has been, but it's going to be what that palpate like, how's, how are we going to go down the path of this case. And it's going to be your comfort zone too. What do you feel comfortable managing and where – how much, and it's going to be based on real for a couple of and stuff. You'll end up doing a few of these cases. But I, blood tests, ultrasound, radiographs, digital microscopy, it's all can be replicated without loss of information, and education is going to be huge. You're going to get to learn from these cases too, which is going to keep your interest level. They're, it's all, they're going to be, uh, the DICOM on the images, right, on those images, and then all the paperwork is just going to get faxed in. When I, the way I've done it, the way we looked at it, because fax is the lowest common denominator. Everyone has that. So you actually fax it in, and it converts it into DICOM, and then it, it just shows up in one place, and you can move it around. I'll show you that on the system. But what's going to happen is that's where practice management is going to all come into play, is with the new practice management software, you're going to say, send this off for a consult. It's going to take all the data for that patient, pull it automatically, and send it with. And then they're going to be inundated with information. And then anything that they want, 
they're going to be able to just look back and say, oh, well, what was the blood work like three months ago? Click on that, you know, because that's what's going on now is they're taking all that practice management software, sucking it out for you if you send it for a consult. To the consultant, and that's why what's going to happen is, like, for instance, IDEX, the big one, what they're doing is that's why they're positioning themselves with Cornerstone and their reading and all of that. And their new system is just going to click a button, say, I want to send this off. And it's going to ask you what you want to attach. Do you want to attach all your blood work? Yes. Do you want to attach your histopath? Yes. Do you want to attach this and that? Yes. It all goes together. And they're going to have consultants there that are going to look at all this data. And then they're going to send you back a report. And then they're going to say, oh, why don't you have someone else review it, some other consultant review it. They're just going to keep coming back to the well. And you're going to be doing having consult after consult. And they're going to utilize. That's why everyone is vying for practice management superiority and integration. Does that make sense? And the thing about it is going to be easy. You're going to push one button, and you're not going to have to talk to your staff and tell them, you know, go find this, go get that, attach this. One button, and you, someone's going to type in, your, you type in your question, and it's gone. And then you go on to your next case, and when you come back, there's your, your consult. And you're going to say to the owner, we just got an internal medicine consult. We just got a surgical consult. We're going to bill you for that. Thank you very much. It's just like lab services. It's not too hard to imagine, huh? Like it's where everything's going. And that's why teleradiology is just the beginning of that. So that's why I call it the beginning of the general veteran. I should add in there the beginning of the emergency critical care era. Because it's going to be... Managing cases, critical cases, and it's how it's going to, I think. It hasn't been worked out. It has not been worked out. And it's potentially, I, I've, I've heard some rumblings about it trying to get worked out and some lawsuits coming down. But right now, you can practice across state lines. The human uh, laws just haven't been enforced in the veterinary side. Well, that's why in human medicine, it's, the hip is so important. And they also are having the same issue in terms of having one universal system. Microsoft is trying to get it where you have your medical record online. I've heard doctors saying it's not going to happen because everyone's fighting over it. But we don't have that type of HIPAA. Right. And so on the veterinary side, we're kind of blessed in that way because now we're going to be able to move faster than them in terms of getting all this information out there. And if uh, someone wants to hack in and know that Rocky the Schnauzer, who's 15, has a lipoma, I don't know what they're going to do with it. Rocky's not going to be running for office. <laughs> they're, not, they're not pulling that kind of data. Well, they're not saying they're pulling that kind of data, but that's going to practice management because it does open you up to that vulnerability. And that is where, and a little off topic, but that's where I see a little bit of an issue with the BCAs and the Antex is, you know, they start looking at you know, what your client base is, how many, and I don't want to say big brother watching, but they're going to have a lot of information. And then you can say, is this practice worth buying? Is that practice worth buying to compete with this practice? So it's information. Information is gold. If you can make decisions based on all that information and make the right decision, you're going to want to go after it. Business. Everyone's in business. We love veterinarians. Actually, are probably the only ones that aren't in business. We're not very good at. We we love the animals. We do it for the animals, and we're not the best at, at actually taking care of ourselves. And this though is going to actually make it so you're going to be able to easily take care of yourself because they're just going to hand it to you and say, "Here you go. These are more services you can do because these big companies want to make money." So, GPs, if you think, "All right, my day is." really busy. I'm at the ceiling of what I can do, exams, surgeries, things like that. You have to, before you had to utilize your support staff, have technician exams, things like that, add this to your arsenal. It's going to be, again, you're going to go in and do your other stuff, and you're going to send off for consults, and you're going to find your consultants that are good. They're just like everyone else. There's good consultants, there's bad consultants, and there's consultants that follow up and do a good job, and you're just going to say, these are the ones that I really trust. They care, and you're going to keep using them, and you're going to be able to be productive while someone else is making you money. 
So don't let this opportunity slip. So how do you prepare for tele? First is, while you're here, is understanding DICOM, the beginning of it, because you need to be able to move the data, right? And email is a non-starter. You do not crap in is crap out. You may get bad images, right? They're not going to be able to help you out. So you got to be able to, if you're looking at a system or you're someone saying to you, JPEG's okay to send, know that you're making it a little bit tougher on someone else on the other end. So try and send DICOM. Try and keep the thing in mind that you do not want any alteration in uh, information. Any loss of information is going to affect their ID. If it's blood work and it's on a piece of paper or a PDF, that's a different story. But if it's diagnostic information, try and keep it as native as possible. So then the biggest problem that um, I think the uh, big IDEX, Antec, all of them are going to have is getting everyone onto a practice management software that everything is paperless. That's, again, trying to move to paperless. Everyone's like, oh, I want to go paperless. They want you to go paperless too because then you can move everything to them. But everyone pretty much, and that was, I kind of went at a different way, so I'll show you how I did it, but everyone has a fax, and a lot of people still use paper. And so the lowest common ground there, you can fax and stuff and then have it become the medical record in the cloud, and you can add in other stuff too. So there's probably someone else doing it, but I want you to see what's out there so that you understand the opportunities and, and say, oh, you know what, you can get that information in this way. Practice management integration. So if you're looking at it, that's your next big purchase, and it's probably they're going to come knocking on your door and say, hey, think about doing a practice management changeover. Because digital imaging is kind of about 60% of hospitals in the U.S. have bought digital imaging. They're not coming back. I am an Antec recently called a hospital and said that the system that they bought five years ago, they're end of lifing it, and they have to upgrade and spend another $70,000, right? They don't have to. It's BS. Someone's going to – it'll take care of it. But they are now struggling to find a new market. That rush is over, right? You buy – everyone bought it. You got the, the trailing part, but they see the writing on the wall. They're going to try and go back to that. They're going to actually try and push the next thing. Because there's always, right, every five years, there's some new product, something new to talk about. It's ultrasound. It's digital imaging. It's, it's going to be something next. It's going to be practice management is coming up, and everyone's going to be talking about it. And in 2013, if I'm wrong, come tell me. I, I think that this is huge. So PIMS, they're going to talk about a practice information management system. That's what they're saying, PIMS. Abmark, Cornerstone, VIA, all of that. Antec is coming out with a new uh, VIA. They're, they're scrapping VIA something different. But they've got the core components already. I mean, think about that, Antec and IDEX. You're using their lab services. Sucks right down into your system, right? It's beautiful. Everything's right there. Well, they're going to want to do something with that information. They're going to want you to turn it around and give it back to them and use their consultants with everything else so they can make more money. They're thinking, all right, how do we do this? So they're going to, they, Cornerstone, perfect. I mean, Cornerstone come in a lot of times and give it away, right? Why are they going to give it away? Because it's lock in, vendor lock in. So with Cornerstone, you got to keep buying stuff from IDEX. You got to buy all the little cartridges and all of that. That's the difference with DICOM versus the other, this this new era that's going to happen. Is each vendor is going to be doing their own proprietary thing because they don't want to make that same mistake where people bought a system, it's DICOM, oh we can move to a different storage base because the recurring income is where really the big money is. It's not in the first hit; it's the recurring income. You've already, for those that have this ability, you've already recognized data in one place saves you time. You no, no more lost records, right? Everything's right there. So this is where I think it's going to go. Here we go again. They're going to come in. They're going to pressure sale. Hey, upgrade your system. Upgrade up. You know, think about going paperless. Do it. All that stuff. It's the Schick Razor model, the inkjet model, right? You go down to the store, Best Buy, and buy an HP inkjet printer, you think, how the heck can they give this away for 50 bucks? That's what they're going to do. That's what they're doing. And Avamark's number one, and Cornerstone is number two in terms of the um, market dominance, market penetrance. And so Avamark's getting on board with this whole thing, too. They've 
they've got Dragonfly, right? They bought Dragonfly, they integrate with IDEX, they're all going to partner up. But it's going to be a vendor lock-in, and there is not going to be a standard on the horizon. No one is pushing for it because the veterinarians are going, oh, it's not a big deal, right? There's been some vet, vet MX or vet X or something like that where you're able to move data across on the human side. They never allow this. Would never allow it. But in the veterinary side, the rules, it's the Wild West. They're going to let it happen. And then people are going to get vendor lock in and you're going to have to be buying or you have to switch everything. And then they're going to say, okay, you want to migrate your data? It's going to be $15,000 to move everything over. They don't want to lose you. So practice management positive, workflow efficiency. From your aspect, you guys, again, it's your error. You've got your workflow. It's going to be easy. You're going to be able to capture every charge. Someone goes to take an x-ray, they're going to have to put it in. It's going to then release the ability to take the x-ray. It's going to be captured as revenue. No more freebies. It's going to be great. You're going to look at this and go, that's really great. Modality work list. How many of you have heard of modality work list? Modality work list is where patient comes in for an appointment. They're already scheduled to have x-rays at 2 o'clock. They show up at 1.45. Staff, front staff puts in their name, says, oh, they're getting x-rays today. Talks to the x-ray machine, the, the digital machine. The information is already populated for the patient. Tech goes in, runs the study. It's already preloaded for them. There's no loss, no change in patient name. No, oh, well, this time we called it Fluffy Jones. Last time we called it Fluffoo Jones. And we can't find the images. It's all just starting from the beginning, and then at the end of the day, that all those charges are captured. There's no lost revenue. Sounds pretty nice, right? So, and it's paperless, and you're going to have your ease of teleconsulting. I, I can't stress this enough, because I don't know if you've had that before. It sucks when you feel like, I am getting treated like dirt by this vendor. They know they've got me by the short hairs. And and you cannot get away. Yeah. It's a whole new set of issues, which makes this guy king right there. He's, he's leading the charge. He's, he's an IT guy. But IT has become so important. So you're going to make your easier in some ways and harder in others, and you need to have all that stuff. We're going to talk about backup and all that. It just But the negative, the ease of pulling your data, as easy it is to get everything in, it's also easy for them to pull anything that they want. It's a little bit of a big brother, a little, little concerning. And then another backup nightmare. All right. So I'm going to jump down to this one, which yeah, kind of, thank you. It was very nice of you, and that was not paid for at all. It's not a question of off-site versus on-site storage. It's just a question of how you're going to do off-site storage. All right. Because you're putting, now you're going to put more and more data onto the, some type of digital format got to have it off-site somewhere. It can be that you just put it on a hard drive and back it up every night and have two of them swap them. It can be that you run a DVD uh, of that day and take it home and put it somewhere. It can be that you do stuff off-site because I can tell you what, Antec and IDEX are going to offer off-site storage that they're going to charge you for. But you have to do something because one day took two days to recover. What if it was one year? All that, all that information now has to be somewhere safe. It's a whole new set of problems to deal with. And the vendors are going to make it very easy for you. They're going to make it as easy as that one click of getting all your information. And they're going to tell you, just go with our solution. So I'm just trying to give you kind of food for thought as you're doing this. All right. So where practice is headed? This is why not getting locked in is so important. If it's local, great. But think about now the internet. What if you could, what, how many of you still have email that's only on your computer at work? How many of you use the cloud email? Yahoo, Google. Could you imagine going back 
to internet, or I'm sorry, email only on one computer when you need an email, what the heck are you going to go do? Vendor lock-in, if they don't offer a cloud solution, is going to be like going back to that, where you have to actually run down to the office and or log in remotely and do a bunch of steps, right? Versus being able to be anywhere and punch in. And when it goes to the cloud and then they have your data and you say, I want to migrate because it's going to migrate, it's going to go to the cloud because that's going to be your best place because then you don't have any of the headaches. Someone else takes care of it because cloud's going to be up. Your data, your server isn't always going to be up. The cloud's going to always be up pretty much. Your electricity and internet connection is going to be up. You don't have to worry about hard drives. You are not going to be able to get to that cloud, and you're not, going to, and you're going to have email on your computer network. That's pretty much the way to equate it to. And that's why it's going to go there quickly, is because there's no HIPAA, and you're going to actually have it, automatic data retrieval where everything that's in your system sucked in and becomes console stuff. So, 2012, it's really about the infrastructures there, the bandwidths there, all that stuff is there. It's all getting cheap. So digital imaging set the standard for how it's going to go, EMR, electronic medical record, and then it's just a question of early adopters and then everyone else getting on board. And the, the consult services, it's the right time because the Internet has taken away a big part of what our business model was, and people are scrambling looking for another business model. Well, the consult services is going to fill that, and it's going to fill it just naturally. It's not even, they're not going to have to sell it. They're just going to say, oh, well, you can start sending more stuff off to the lab. You know? I can make money in the lab. You can start using this service and that service. And I use teleradiology. Well, now you can use tele-internal medicine, tele-surgery, tele-oncology, all that stuff. And be like, I can do a physical exam and tell them what they need. And if I have questions, I'll call them back. But it doesn't work if you have to give them you know, a bunch of information while you're sitting on the phone and say, well, oh, the ALT? Mm, let me look. What date did you want? Oh, okay, hold on. Flip through. It only works if they have everything in front of them and they do it so that you don't have to think about it and you're doing something else. <clears throat> I guess I'd say embrace that web. Embrace what's going to come because you're going to be utilizing it a lot. And I wanted to get to something said, but actually there was some other thing here. And I, well, well, we'll go through this. because I, It's probably not what you came for. I hope this is informative, though. I'm going to talk a little bit about some other DICOM stuff. IP address, port number, and all of that. But I think that stuff's very technical. But I wanted to just at least sprinkle in some of the other education stuff so you're familiar with the jargon. But this right here, they're going to all, they are, I really think so. I think they're all coming to you. Right? Oncologist, I, I couldn't believe it. I talked to Dr. Flurry today. She's in the hospital doing an oncology consult at their facility. Right? She drove over there to do it. They're all fighting for your business. And they're gonna, it's going to be even a bigger fight because they're not going to have to drive anymore 20 minutes in the car each way, which means they can do more, which means they can actually help more people, which means San Diego is a tough market. We all know that. It's very competitive. And anyone that can get the upper upper hand on that in terms of helping you out and getting your business, they're going to utilize it. And people will be offering these services because if they're driving already to the facility, you say they don't have to drive anymore, you can just send everything in. In terms of reviewing it, you're going to do it. So you guys are the winners. I really think so. Uh, I totally agree with that. I, I really think that, that it's going to drive the price down, which I hate to. <laughs> yeah, because because think of the demographic of, of who now is finishing their residencies, right? And so a lot of people are like, you know, all right, all right I've done my career, um, and it, I want to have family. I want to stay at home, do some things. 
you know, I'd love to stay at home. But if you know, people, you know, like the price of sex workers come down, you want them to stay up for the rest of the It it right, but it, you're you're not even going to be you don't, you're not going to be sending them as much because you, everything that they offer in terms of the education and the knowledge you're going to be able to get by someone with giving them all the data. And then you're going to be seeing, keeping more of your cases, the ones you want to keep, the ones you want to work on. Uh, I think that what happens is going to happen, just like in radiology, you'll find people that you trust and those that you don't. You say, I don't want that person. Just like in labs, you know which ones are good when you send something in for a cytology evaluation. You know who's good, who isn't. They're, they can be changing. If they're good and they're changing a baby, they could still be really good. They probably are really good. I don't think it matters what they're doing. You know that they're, they're good, unless they're trying to do six consults at once. But I can tell you from the radiology side, what's happened is it's a race to the fastest service turnaround at a lower price. And who who loses? The radiologist. Who wins? The, your client and you. You're getting all of this information pretty much as fast as possible. You know, you go in, you're like, oh my God, that's already been read. I can't believe it. And then you have additional diagnostics you do off of that. No, uh, you, you still send them in for a consult. But I'm just saying that if you use a lot of the services now, uh, because more and more radiologists now are doing tele, teleradiology, teleconsulting, teleology, the turnaround time used to be 24 hours. And then it went down to six hours. And now it's like 30 minutes. You can get your information back. And everyone wants it now, now, now. And that, in 30 minutes, three years ago, if you said, you know, I want all my reports back in 30 minutes, I'd say, I want $120 a case. You want me to sit there now? That's just 40 bucks. No, it's not even a stat. You can send stuff in. Not even do stat anymore and get it back so fast because everyone's just sitting there waiting for the commission. Same thing. The radiology college is 300 people, of which half are academics. 150 people. We're a tiny college. How big is internal medicine college? A thousand. Over a thousand. So you all should be scared. You should be elated. You'd be like, wow, this is great. Price wise, I, I think that it, it, there's two ways it's going to go. And honestly, the survivors in this are going to be hospitals that keep their prices very high and are in affluent areas, the, the specialty facilities, and have a very strong emergency critical care facility. And that's what they built it on. Because if they try and have a um, huge facility and cut their prices, they're going to get swallowed up. <laughs> yeah, it's going back. And they're all, they're going to be working from home because that's the only model that's going to sustain. And you're going to be their eyes. You're going to be their hands. And they're going to be, when you're going to be, they're going to be telling you what to do in terms of they're offer their input and you're going to do it. And then if the animal's not doing well, it's going to go to a emergency facility in a 30 mile radius. And that's where they're going to sit and get, then you can have a core like that. But I just don't see these huge facilities unless there's a, uh, crazy amount of people that start getting pets and have loads of money, I don't see it sustainable. I, that's my feeling. I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. This is me conjecture, but I've seen it with radiology.
and it's going to be all on the web, all that information. So if you want to go look up something, log in. Uh, that's how I see it. That I see it a return to that. That's how I see it. I, I could be wrong, but but what is it? The specialty hospital they do a great job. All specialists do a great job. But what do they have that really the reason the clients go to them take out the emergency critical care aspect? All right, and surgery too, because they have that expertise. But if you're going there for information, the internet brings that information to you. So anything that's going there for information, any reason, especially internal medicine, because that's information, they're not going to be able to compete. But it's your comfort level. So you'll have to go to courses if you find that to be something you want to do. If you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. Some that some will be. Yeah, some will be, but there's there's a fair amount that is just going to sit at home, or you know, in a and they're going to make a good good living off of it. Yeah, but it's going to be slitting the throat of the other internists that are out there trying to you know build the megaplex. Yeah, so yeah, because you know, I mean, I I'm understanding that the actual physical buildings are going to be like 30 years ago, where it was mostly emergencies, and that's where you had to send them. That's how I yeah. see it. I think so. I really think so. I think everything's going to be there for that. Yeah. Although I do like you, I don't want to come all the way to your place. I want to see where I'm seeing, and I want you to see where I'm seeing, what you think about me. So how can I send what I think about you to you? Okay, so what we talked about answers this question, which is there cannot be any loss of information using the Internet, right? So you would have to be streaming a video, because if I gave you four clips, four little pictures off of a movie, handed you the film, right? Because I'd have to deal with film because you can't, I gave you this, be about as accurate. You said, okay, what's this movie about? You can't tell me what that movie is about. But if I show you the whole film, you can tell me everything about it, right? So you're, it's going to have to stream the entire video stream, which means that for those that are really interested in ultrasound, they're going to have to go to courses where they are learning how to hold the probe and taking direction from people and doing it. I see it a little different. I see it as being trained sonographers going in and doing it. But for people that want to, you're going to have people that are going to absolutely read whatever you send them because you're going to get the continuum and you have to decide what is okay for your patients. And when if, if you're getting the right answers and answers that follow up and you're happy with it, great. That service is going to be available already is. And how to do it, it's a DICOM send on stills. It's a DICOM send on clips out of the machine. I'm a corporation too. Escort. A few less. A few. But 
No, I know. No, we'll talk about it. We'll definitely talk. I'm going to show you in here already all this information, all right? So the old brick-and-mortar referral, I come send your images, or you email them, or you give them a disk, and you give your owner the paperwork, or you fax the paperwork over, because this is how all, if you can move the data to a consultant, you can move the data to a referral, right? So let's just talk about a DICOM transfer, because I don't know if you've heard these terms. Number, AE title is the name of the system. Wake up. That's all. AE title is the name of the system. It's kind of like I say, hey, Karen, how you doing? You say, hey, Seth, I'm doing all right, right? That's the title. That They have to match. If I say, if I'm looking at the audience and I say, I'm directing this at Karen, everyone else knows it's not for them, right? So that's the first part is that they have to match up with the name of the unit. The IP address, the internet protocol address, is going to be the address. It's kind of like your street address. Maybe you live at 123 Main Street. That's it. It comes across. It's a, it, uh, separated. It's uh, usually eight digits separated by four dots, but it doesn't have to be. It could be uh, a typical one, like I'll tell you, R66.27.50.134. So it's nine. And that has to match. So you have to say, I'm sending to this address, this street address. And it says, on the other side, it says, I am accepting anything from that street address with this name and a specific port with the last one. And a port is a portal or a door. And it has to match and say, I am only allowing traffic from Karen at 123 Main Street through the red door. And both systems have to match up. And when they match up, then it will allow the traffic to go across and you'll be able to send it. And a lot of times, the receiving party will not allow that type of transfer because it opens up the ability for someone to work their way into their system and it makes it not secure. All right? That's why a lot of people have gone to email because they find email, which is port 25, port 23, you know, I email. But it's a certain port, and it's, it's tougher to, to work, work your way in versus these other ports. People can get in and do some damage, so they want to keep their system locked down. Even at hospitals, right? A lot of, a lot of hospitals lock down their internet, which I find foolish because you're, all your staff have internet on their phone. So they're just going to anyway. So if you're staff, you worry about your staff being on the internet. You have your own staff. You should just be like, no, that's not acceptable because they're going to be on their phones somewhere else anyways. Um true there. And again, if you got staff downloading stuff to your system and you told them not to, wrong staff, my feeling. Um, it's, uh, and that's tough in veterinary because we know that a lot of people in veterinary, especially the staff, they have, they went to animal reason and trauma, something that was catastrophic in their lives and they have a lot of issues that they have to work out. It's true. It's very, very true. So you, you have trouble yelling at them. They cry. I mean, I cry. I do. I am, I'm in it for, I was very fat as a kid. It's tough. It's getting a little more than you wanted here. It's being recorded. But so people are going to throw that jargon around. Hey, what's your AE title? What's your IP address? What's your port number? We'll accept it. That's what they're asking you for. They're asking you for your system's name, the address, and what port they're going through. And some people may say, we're not going to accept. We don't take DICOM transfers. Okay. So that's a little bit of that education. Don't want to make it too crazy for you, but that's the main things with DICOM. But what's going to happen with the new, the new brick and mortar referral, right? Everything's getting sucked up. I don't think you have to worry about this DICOM information, this DICOM stuff, because there's so much more information that they're going to want, that they're going to find a way to move it across. And I said email doesn't cut it. Well, email doesn't cut it in sending email, but I think there's going to be links, and there's going to be links to everything, and the links to the images that they can pull down, links to all the data that they can pull down, links to reports that have been done, electronic medical record in the cloud, patient from the time when they first started accumulating data to the time that now they're going somewhere is all going together as links. And you're going to be able to pull what you want. And it's oh, if they everything was standardized, it would just then integrate right into your system or integrate to their system, but they're not going to allow that because then it allows you to migrate all your data to another vendor who will then sell you all the other services. So they're going to make it so it's be very tough.
to move data into your system. That's the downside of it, yeah. Two totally different things there. That cat is unstable and needs to stay at some places 24-7. But if the if you're asking a cat that's stable but looks weird and you want Karen's opinion, and you're asking the owner to go drive over there with this because you can't get it, get it to them any other way, that's just a waste of the owner's time. Um, it depends on the system that she has. If she has a cloud-based viewer, and get into her system uh, after she receives it. But I think anyone who wants cases for referrals should be able to accept all this information very easily. There are also third-party systems out there. You're really good with lead-ins, aren't you? But I'll just show you how to do it. But but <laughs> the um, but you you're gonna have to. Uh, if you want to get it just to them, then they, they're going to have to allow that Diacom transfer and they have to get comfortable with it. If you want it to be somewhere else where someone else can look at it, then it's going to be in the cloud, stored there, and you're going to be able to just email them a link. And they're going to be able to click on that link, download the images if they want, or use some type of web-based viewer. And someone's going to end up having to pay for it. It's going to be like a buck, two bucks, but they're going to allow That's how it's going to be done. And then all the information. But you want everything there. That's the thing. You want to have the blood work there so that she can look at not only the chest films, but the blood work and anything else that's happened, histopath, all of that, right? So I was going to show you that stuff. We're running out of time, huh? Okay. We talked about DICOM viewers, and I want you to know about these. There are a lot of them out there, but the most common one is eFilm from a PC. And the reason that is is because that started with sound. Um, uh, Eklund, sorry, Eklund used eFilm Merge. It's a big human side company, and so everyone got used to eFilm. It's a good, good viewer. It's a little bit antiquated, um, but uh, <clears throat> it's a decent viewer. Osirix, which is for Mac, and there's a paid version for FDA if you need FDA um, approval if you're reading for human, if you're reading human studies. Um, so you have to have that. But freeware, Osirix has a free version that is. For zero dollars, better than any paid DICOM viewer out there. It does so many amazing things. k -Pack's on the PC. That is a free one. You can go to kpack.org. Um, and also Clear Campus. Those are all free DICOM viewers that have tremendous abilities. And But they need to know how to set them up. Where you sell, tell your main system that... <clears throat> I want you to send to all these different computers, and they, you have to know your AE title, IP, and port number of what the other ones, the viewers are, and you have to put that information into your main system and the other way around. It has to be bi-directional that they have to accept each other. If you can learn that stuff and you understand it, then you can set up your whole hospital, distribute images out everywhere at zero dollars. But the reason it's charged is because who the heck has time? Someone has to go in there and do it. And they have to pay that person. That person needs to pay rent. And they want to make a business out of it. And I, I don't blame them. And then the web, which everything is going to go cloud. I, not, of course, everything's an overstatement, but cloud is going to be easy because then you don't have to deal with it at all. Updates, patches, things breaking. So much easier just having an internet connection. So I am going to show you kind of all the stuff that um, how this stuff all integrates through this Photology platform. This is, um, first off, how on the consultant side, but on the clinic side, and what it starts with on this system, and this is going to be totally different from a practice management system, because they can just put it up with some other piece of data. But right now, DICOM is, because we're radiologists, we have the DICOM data and get that, and then you can start attaching things to it. So 
say you want to have that reviewed, and you would put your patient information history there, and then you would add in, it, it, depending on the DICOM system, it may fill in these for you, it may not. And then you end up putting in, and now you're starting to see where you can actually pick what consultant that you want to have look at something. Hey, you know what? I know this thing looks kind of funky, but I want to know from a surgeon, right, what it, what the best surgical approach would be. So instead of sending it off to the radiologist, the surgeon looks at it. Or, hey, you know what? I really want to know from blood work, because I'll show you how to get this system, how you can get blood work in there too, what's going on sequentially, and then they can get you a report back on that. All right? And the way that this is done, because there is not a standard for it, is... For anything that's digitized, everyone's done this with email, you just upload your documents. And I've already talked to one company that can go into every practice management software, the $20,000 of practice management software, and hit their database and suck everything out. So what's going to happen is this is going to be a patient ID, put in your patient ID that's unique to your system, and then it's going to go and match that patient ID and suck everything out in the future for it that you want. And then it put it with a console. Same thing, but the IDEX who has the access to the entire thing is going to do it, and it's easier for them because they already have access to everything. They're going to make it tough for others. But you would upload any digitized file, and then here, the way uh, I figured out to skin the cat for, it's a bad metaphor to use in veterinary place, but um, is, because a lot of people have faxes, is it comes across as a fax cover sheet with, a barcode on it and that barcode is unique to that patient and then you fax it back and it reads that barcode and it says oh this barcode matches this DICOM information and therefore it makes a DICOM image out of that and adds it to the file so now when you send it off to someone or burn a CD of it they not only get the patient images they get all the paperwork that you faxed in too or you email it to them you don't have to give the owner anything anymore you just hand them you tell them it's already waiting there over there for you as an email and they don't lose anything. So let me show you how that looks. This is blood work that was converted by that barcode into a fax. Right? Imagine now you have that. You go into an exam room and send off this plus all your other dates and ask someone to look at it and say, what's going on with the trend? What should I do? You don't have to read anything off to them anymore have it all there. And the thing is, this is a DICOM viewer. This is a web-based DICOM viewer. Right? It's freeware, and so let me get on to, that's the facts. Anything else that you kind of send in as upload, and even though this isn't the same uh, patient, but it could be, because all that goes together, on the same viewer, Right? They can look at the radiographs and they can do a window level, right? Can zoom, go back to the blood work. Let me see here, where's the zoom on this? I'm not going to get too much into this. That's the window level. Uh, let me change this one. Hold on. Oh, I can't read that. All right, now I can. Everything now is electronic, right? No more lost records. It's all there. And so how does that, so this stuff gets sent in. It changes. You can see the consultants change. So each one of these different groups send in. And then from the clinic side, they will end up having, once everything's done, the information, and you hit email, and you'll see here, it includes the DICOM link, it includes the viewer, all that stuff that's been digitized now goes wherever you want to email it off to. And on the other end, because everyone always complains, oh, I can't open stuff, the recipient receives something that looks like this, which is, oh, okay, I want to look at the consultant report. All right, I get to open that. You know, it's just a link. Oh, I want to... Download the images. They get a download. Oh, I want to use the viewer, online viewer. 
and they can pull up everything right there without having to import anything. It's all because it's all cloud based. Yeah, this is my program. After DVM Insight, I, this is where DVM Insight was supposed to go. It didn't go there. But I'm just this, and that's why what you're hearing from from this is where I think things are going. That's why I modeled because I really think things are going to go there. I've seen it already on the radiology side, and so now you can imagine how easy your life is going to be when you can just send everything off now and have it all EMR. Yep. With a simple little email link. And everything can actually go this way. Oh, he had an ultrasound done. Um, let me see if actually this comes across and opens. I don't know if it's going to open on its own. Uh, but this is a video. I don't know if there's a video player. I mean, it might, it might work. Let's see if that works. So ultrasounds that are done that are stored digitally. Now that goes with too. All right? So every bit of information goes with the patient to a consultant. It goes off to a referral. It's all in one place. No more lost stuff. No more calls at 8 o'clock. Oh, we can't get that. Got to run staff to the office and refax or something. 